Today I am talking about uh, theory and practice of student project preparation, especially um, social science. Uh, so we are dealing with the commerce and management students. So let us uh, uh, let us uh, provide some details uh, about the students' uh, project preparations. Uh, okay. So first of all, identification of uh, topic area or uh, 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 sources of problems. Every student is now facing difficulty to find the topic area. So all are asking uh, which is a topic, how do I find a topic, etc. So these questions can be resolved through uh, understanding many uh, issues like uh, society. Now society is facing many problems. So we can identify the problems and we can do a research uh, to to find the root causes of the problems and we will have policy suggestions to avoid the problems after the field survey and uh, economy economy is uh, uh, facing some crisis uh, economy is sometimes may be good sometimes uh, inflation may hurt the economy sometimes the depreciation of the currency. For instance, uh, we have uh, now recently uh, the central bank digital currency has been introduced and we can also work on that. So uh, while analyzing the economy, we are getting some uh, insights on uh, what kind of area we can do a research and the global issues like climate mitigation and uh, especially in finance, we can take topics like uh, climate finance. Uh, and uh, sustainable development goals, especially which are the goals which can be customized uh, towards, uh, I mean, sus uh, sustainability, uh, how we can find finance for sustainability. So, like uh, many of the sustainable development goals, specifically, we can take research and we can also get topics from uh, the Q1 and Q2 journals, uh, Q1 and Q2, especially for the Scopus Index. And uh, I would say that if you read the Q1 and Q2 related with the subject disciplines, you will get some insights on recent areas of research uh, and what are the recent uh, topics. So from these recent topics, you can customize one topic which can be a researchable one and we can cancel with the teachers. Uh, so the teachers, uh, uh, professors are aware about the recent issues. So they may suggest some topics and discussions with the uh, other ex people, discussion with the policy makers, etc. may be also helpful and you can uh, find problems in newspapers like Economic Times, Business Line. There are business newspapers if you read a uh, couple of months uh, earlier uh, daily news uh, by collecting the from the library or some something else, uh, somewhere else. So uh, you can also get uh, stuck up with, I mean, uh, get with problems. And uh, there are impact of policies, impact of GST, impact of uh, CBDC. So there are policies uh, introduced by the government. So you can study the impact of policies. And you can get problems from the friends, colleagues, etc. So these are the sources of problems. Uh, mainly you will get uh, for, the, for the project. And uh, designing the topic uh, feasibility. Uh, so uh, when you take a topic, you should check the feasibility of the topic in terms of the uh, factors such as the first one is data access. Uh, data access uh, means whether uh, your data is accessible. So there are different types of uh, data that are primary and secondary. Primary means uh, like a cross-sectional approach uh, uh, and uh, you go to the field and collect uh, data and secondary, uh, say there are secondary sources, uh, there are databases available. So you need to check whether the data is accessible. If your study uh, needs some data which is not accessible, you should just stop the work, uh, stop that project and you can go to the further uh, selection of the project because if the data is not accessible, you cannot complete the work. And the methodology to support again uh, the much time sampling part um, and the respondents are uh, 
are uh, cooperating with us or not and that type of respondents and the main thing is uh, you can check uh, uh, whether the research is over researched or under research if it is under research there is a scope of research if it is over research you can uh, it is very difficult to find a gap otherwise the evaluators may say that it's already done so if the research is already done by many people the same topic same objective has been done then there is no scope for further research so as you can check whether this the novelty of the uh, topic and novelty of the findings uh, that novelty is very essential uh, for research then where is field of uh, survey and your field of survey like uh, if you are doing a project your field of survey is abroad then you have to have uh, funds to travel and uh, collect data if you are if your project uh, is a local one you just uh, go to the local area so the field uh, where is the field of survey and if any databases uh, are ready uh, ready to available like uh, sometimes free of databases sometimes it is paid some are paid sometimes your university may subscribe some data you can uh, access sometimes uh, like bloomberg uh, provides a paid database you have to pay for the for, for it uh, for getting uh, data access so so all these things are uh, checking the feasibility so the supervisor may check your feasibility of the topic uh, if uh, if your topic is uh, not feasible they may reject the topic so the feasibility is feasibility investigation is must for the selection of a topic and after that if the topic is feasible you can finalize the uh, topic and you can consult with your supervisor before selecting a topic and based on that uh, after the first uh, consultation uh, like uh, you can prepare a synopsis uh, the synopsis covering the objectives and the statement of the problem uh, etc okay so uh, it's also very important uh, with regard to the consultation with the supervisor for finalizing the topic after checking the feasibility investigation the next is uh, the project title uh, so project title uh, is very important uh, the project titles uh, when we go for the viva after completion of the project they do check the title uh, what kind of title the impression of the title you know you, you there's chance of getting more marks and so uh, everyone uh, should be like uh, more conscious about the setting of a very good title so the title there are uh, there are uh, vague title and clear title so effective and enough to title you can see here uh, there is an effective title effect of depression uh, on the decision to join a clinical trial so there is an ineffective title a study on the effect so the, uh, there is a repetition by many people you know they are adding a study uh, with reference something like that so already you are studying there is no necessity to again uh, uh, to include a study so more direct is good so the first one is good the effect of depression on the decision to join a clinical trial so we can remove a study of the a study of the so unnecessary words have been cut so it should be like more direct then the next one is why and when hierarchy impacts team effectiveness a meta analytic integration that is an effective one so the second one you can see that uh, 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 hierarchy uh, and team effectiveness so so this is like ineffective so more precise the relationship between variables having uh, clarified variables uh, why and when hierarchy impacts team effectiveness the hierarchy and team effectiveness there is two variables one is dependent and one other is independent and uh, again uh, the title says that a meta-analytical integration the meta-analysis means based on the previous research uh, we have been integrating the previous research and find a solution find the suggestions find an insights uh, and this specified though it will become more clear the first one is clear FAQ title why and when hierarchy impacts team effectiveness and meta-analytic integration and the third one is closing your eyes to follow your heart 
avoiding information to protect a strong intuitive preference uh, and uh, the, the ineffective one is uh, less because uh, effective the closing your eyes to follow your heart nobody can understand the meaning of the title so the first one is more effective more informative and it will become more good you know uh, there is a substantive subtitle so the main title and the subtitle so the subtitle is substantiating the main title the, the ineffective title only the first one so so we can add uh, the subtitle also in some uh, titles some title some title we can find that is one title and uh, the some title we can find that is sub sub subtitle the subtitle to substantiate the the first uh, the first one okay Then project process. Uh, the first one is literature review. Uh, so uh, literature review, uh, we can have different literature review, uh, different format. Like uh, some people, you know, they write independent literature review. Some people write thematic literature review. Some people write methodological review. Some people write theoretical review. Some people write uh, procedural uh, review. So, but uh, in social science, especially follows the thematic review, like a uh, systematic review of literature. Okay, what is systematic uh, literature review? We can, uh, we can analyze the systematic uh, literature review. So, uh, the rationale for systematic literature review. Systematic literature reviews are specific methodology that allows for creating content based on reviewing the literature without collecting empirical data. So here we are collecting uh, some uh, reviews, some, some papers based on some criteria. But here we eliminate some papers, exclude some papers uh, because such papers are not, uh, uh, not in accordance with our criteria. So, so based on the papers, we are finding the themes and we are reviewing those papers and write reviews. Okay, so uh, try to answer a research question based on uh, reviews. Okay, so for example, I would say that we are checking the climate fintech models. So we, uh, we will be taken uh, some papers based on the keyword climate fintech, climate finance. And based on the papers, one objective may be set like to, to examine the progress of the concept of climate fintech. So based on these papers, uh, we will be able to write, we will be able to uh, solve uh, that objective, we will be able to answer that research question to understand the progress of the concept of climate fintech. So systematic literature review help to even a student can complete the project uh, only considering the only using the systematic literature review so we don't uh, need further analysis even the systematic literature review itself you know uh, you know helpful uh, helpful uh, uh, for solving or uh, for uh, for finding solution to the research questions So there are inclusion criteria, as I said, the inclusion criteria, the literature to be reviewed using Google Scholar. So there are, uh, you know, MCOM uh, or MBA projects, they can use the Google Scholar, very good. So Google Scholar, you know, they are providing the database and they are providing the citation reference also. So the students can access the Google Scholar, some of the Google Scholar uh, open access our uh, publications are open access and they can uh, you know they can uh, uh, take it from the google scholar and uh, they can read the abstract so uh, uh, google scholar index papers can take and there are only those studies closely related to the research questions so we can have a criteria like uh, the reviews should be closely related to the research questions so that is the criteria and sometimes some people uh, some uh, strong criteria like the paper should be list indexed in scopus and uh, web of science so these scopus and web of science is treated as uh, good indexes and uh, 
like quality indexes only quality papers were indexed or listed in scopus and web of science quality journals so the only those papers which were indexed in scopus and web of science can be can be taken that may be one criteria so this kind of criteria can be set by the students for uh, taking off papers for reviews if 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 it is uh, if they are not following any criteria sometimes their reviews are uh, may be biased because of uh, because of lack of criteria some uh, some uh, means over research or plagiarist papers or some kind of thick uh, journal paper they have they may be taken uh, sometimes lead to the bad conclusions sometimes uh, the students are not able to identify the research gap okay then citations uh, how to cite that is again the question students are committing mistakes while citing they don't have proper awareness about citation there are two citations uh, and again they, they can use footnotes and head notes uh, while uh, writing uh, report uh, uh, while writing literature review so these food notes providing additional information and notes providing additional information and the citations provide uh, from where you have taken the the data where from where you are taken the study that will be effective for the others otherwise you know your um, contents may be plagiarized without uh, giving citation uh, so you cannot be able to say that you you, you are not the owner of that content and some uh, 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 okay so uh, this is uh, about citation so i will explain what is uh, how we can narrative use uh, narrative citations and parenthetical citation so two citations are uh, used uh, uh, while writing literature reviews so first one is the narrative citation so in a narrative citation the author's surname or surname surnames appear appears as part of the sentence uh, so for example this phenomenon frequently occurs in nature uh, according to singh and harris so we are emphasizing the particular order so that occasion we can use uh, narrative citation singh and harris because we are citing him citing the order so this other contribution is so that this is uh, the format of uh, narrative citation and the, the cited author is a part of the sentence and the year is in uh, parenthesis okay the year only in parenthesis okay so this is uh, uh, narrative citation and parenthetical citation so in parenthetical citation, all those surnames and the publication year appears together in parenthesis with a comma separating the two elements. So the parenthetical citation should usually be placed at the end of a sentence. So uh, this is the format of uh, parenthetical citation. The same sentence, this phenomenon frequently occurs in nature, but uh, the full, uh, the other and year in, within the bracket. So the the previous one you can find that you can find that the other's name is the part of the sentence and only year is in bracket. So this is known as narrative citation. And you know, if uh, you are using narrative citation, you are giving emphasis to the particular authors or the others. Okay. So again, there is a confusion by the students. Uh, they use the a full orders like if you are one if it is a one or the sing so this kind of format you can use that if it is sing and harris you can use sing and harris and if it is three orders you can write sing at all okay so this is the difference between narrative and parenthetical citation so parenthetical citation the others the uh, names and year all in bracket okay Sometimes the parenthetical citation should be usually placed it at the end of the sentence, but sometimes we may use the insert sentence also. So while reading good papers, you are able to understand the differences between the narrative and parenthetical citations. So it is uh, uh, promoting the reading of uh, articles, uh, 
dissertation thesis to understand these differences between the narrative and parenthetical citations. So paraphrasing is important if uh, some students, uh, we see some students, you know, just copy and paste whatever it is in the other papers or other dissertations. It's not possible. Uh, it, it, it should not be uh, happen here. So paraphrasing means you just read one paper and you customize the, the contribution of that author in your own words and you rewrite it. So this is known as paraphrasing. So if you copy and paste something from some other paper, some other online material, it will lead for plagiarism and your thesis, your dissertation may be rejected based on that. Otherwise, in the last time, you may need to change your, if the plagiarism exceeds the limit, then your research supervisor may be asked to change or university may be asked to change. So it is better to paraphrase uh, and not to copy, uh, copy and paste from somewhere else. So paraphrasing, is very important and references uh, so this is important references whatever document you cited you just keep the references in alphabetic format so we are following APA style of uh, referencing and APA style of table APA style of figure etc so there is a software so it will be helpful for proper referencing like mentally and Sotero so if it is possible, you can use the references, otherwise you can take the use of uh, Google Scholar. So Google Scholar, there is an option. I'll show you. So you take Google Scholar. So Google Scholar. If you type the green bars, there will be papers appearing using the title of green bonds. And you can find that this understand the role of green bonds. Just click it. And if you cite it, you can uh, go to the page of uh, that uh, journal and you can get the DOI and all. So if it, you can cite this in, uh, this is very easy that you can click your site and you will get the citation just copy and paste from here to the word this is very simple task you can get the references by using the google scholar otherwise you need to type all these things okay so just uh, use of uh, take advantage of uh, google scholar while uh, uh, doing the project So you can use the Mendeley also. Mendeley is a software, you know, Mendeley is very helpful uh, for referencing purpose. So this is a Mendeley software. Here you can, can I'll show you uh, the Mendeley software. So this is the Mendeley software, okay. So here uh, I'm saving some folders here uh, onward. Here and you can, uh, we will we'll get the documents. Here, click it, you can read and uh, write and cite. If you want to cite, you just, uh, you know, uh, open a Word document. simple task so just you write something green bonds and uh, something if you want to cite something just go reference go reference and uh, just type insert citation just click and ask go to mentally and here if you want to cite this paper just click cite okay and uh, the citation has been done okay then after writing something if you want to cite some other papers and cite here 
is one new site and after writing something after writing something if you want to uh, again site apparently a new site is one site this is a simple task uh, and uh, after that after completing you can uh, you can find the references easily so this reference is uh, done inside the bibliography so it's very simple uh, process if you have mentally uh, full references uh, you are getting otherwise you need to you know type all these things it's a very complicated task okay so again go back to the uh, project project process so identification of research gap after reviews you will be able to understand what kind of study is done what kind of aspects studied so you can find that some of the you know some of the work uh, has not done properly some of the work some eliminate some variables so uh, uh, so that uh, you know uh, you can find that uh, uh, you critically examine critically examining the examining the previous previous literature okay uh, and find that find that find that some important variables were not considered okay sometimes uh, sometimes the methodology methodology was not proper uh, sometimes uh, the data set uh, data set was wrong okay so this kind of insights you get and after that you can find the research gap you can based on the gap you can uh, you can uh, you know you can uh, you can uh, write objectives so existing gap is there so you can you can uh, say that uh, you are studying based on the gap okay so for example some studies uh, conducted in foreign in india it is not conducted you can take uh, that studies uh, the literature in india is insufficient or deficient you can say that you can study based on that okay so after writing objectives based on the research gap uh, you can write the research questions okay so the research questions you can write i will show you uh, some research questions so here Here there is one project. So after seeing the research questions, here uh, the research question. This is the way you can write. So here the candidate has been uh, studied the climate fintech models. So what is the current state of development of climate fintech? As I said earlier, this uh, research questions uh, question has been uh, solved through exclusively using the literature and there is no uh, there has no uh, no analysis was done so uh, so what are the implications of the concept of climate issues and how we can leverage the climate fintech idea to combat climate change so these are the research questions so after the research uh, i mean uh, the objectives here to examine the progress of the concept and applications of the climate fintech in theory and practice and we will study the future prospects of climate fintech initiatives in general through qualitative analysis using case studies and sentiments. So for solving these objectives, uh, these kind of research questions were set. Uh, and uh, so similarly, you can, you can also set the objectives and research questions. Again, uh, the methodology, methodology may be qualitative and quantitative. So quantitative in the sense that you uh, can collect data, you can collect uh, uh, data in the sense that processional and time series uh, data, processional means you collect, you go to the field and uh, uh, collect data. Otherwise, uh, you can uh, you can get some databases for uh, processional data, some database like IMF, RBI, for you are getting some one-time data. For example, if you are 
analyzing uh, financial inclusion if you are analyzing fintech if you are analyzing financial technology the databases are available collected by imf and all so you will get the country wise database for a particular period of time so particular time period so uh, so so these databases are available like uh, if you take financial inclusion, the database is 2017 available, 2014, three year time period, they are updating the data 2017 and 2022 or 21 is available. So uh, you can consider one time data that is a cross sectional one, or you can consider this time series data like 2014 and what kind of updations uh, will happen, where happen in 2017. What kind of updation uh, updation was happened in 2022 so you can compare that it become a panel data so if it is the panel data in the sense you can get the data set of india you can get the data set of sri lanka you can get the data set of pakistan you can get the data set of the entire country who were uh, you know about the uh, financial technology so that data set become a panel one so number of countries and number of time period so it become a panel data so uh questionnaires, schedules, and you uh, can understand from how to conduct surveys, uh, interview, recording, samples. This part, uh, to be clear, you can consult with your supervisor regarding that. Uh, and you can also get data from the uh, like uh, paid databases as well as some of the free databases. Yahoo Finance, you can download data set, and NSE, ISID database, Bloomberg database, etc. So call duty also there are methodologies you can complete a project using case study method sentiments analysis okay so uh, this can be you can collect data from teacher regarding sentiments of uh, sometimes bitcoin sentiments of cryptocurrency sentiments of cbdc etc so you can use uh, that uh, so this is the part of uh, qualitative methodology so you can use both one both uh, quantitative and qualitative in one study you can use the quantitative alone in one study, you can use the qualitative alone in one study. Otherwise, you can use the both one that is known as a triangulation approach. And to qualitative one, you will get an insight, and quantitative one, you will get an insight. So you can compare the insights of both uh, methodologies, and you can uh, write an implication based on that. So these are the data set. Uh, data set, I said cross sectional is one point of time. Cross sectional may be primary and secondary. Like uh, primary, you go to the field and collect data. Secondary means some databases are available. Time series also, you can collect uh, different time periods data. You can collect monthly data, like one month you go to the field and another month you go to the field, the third month. You can find that the time period of time, what was happened. And you can find the trend. And time series data also collected, you know, uh, from uh, uh, the databases like Bloomberg, Provence, uh, RBI. So the, the database is providing information. And if you if you have a lot of countries, a lot of time periods, the data is known as the panel one. So uh, the data may be either primary or secondary. Primary means the first time you are collecting. Secondary means some published uh, sources. And you can write the significance of the study. We do find that some errors committed by the students. They do write the significance of. Uh, if they study some institution, they study, they write the significance of the institution. But uh, in significance of the study, you speak about your contributions of the work. So what kind of contributions uh, are provided by the work? So that is the significance of the study. You can write the scope of the study, the which area in which the study covers. It is covered in Kerala, so covered in India, covered in the global context. So the scope of and, and cover the period, period of data set which cover. So that, that is the scope of the studies. So you can write the scope of the study and you can also write uh, the limitations of the study. So uh, limitations uh, in the sense that is sometimes some foolishness may be written by the students like uh, they don't get the time, uh, respondents are smaller number, that kind of, uh, you know, that some sort of that sort of uh, things are not proper limitations. So we be careful while writing the limitations of the study should be like genuine limitations, which, which cannot be, uh, which cannot be, uh, which, uh, uh, which is, which should be written by the candidate. Uh, so it should not be like, uh, foolishness. 
So uh, data analysis, data analysis, you can use softwares, so you can learn softwares through YouTube and all. So Excel, you can use R, you can use SPSS, Stata, Gretel, MaxQDA, and Vivo. These softwares are available, you can learn. It's, it's up to the researcher to use the software. If they are theoretically good, they had some data, uh, so they can learn if at least uh, one week time they are spending, they can uh, find how to analyze the data. So the, the seriousness of the candidate here is the matter uh, to do all these things. So the candidate uh, should be like uh, serious. They can learn this data analysis and there is no need of to understand the everything, everything of the analysis. Just understand uh, the tool which is suitable for their database and that kind of analysis can be learned uh, within a short period of time and they can use it okay they can consult with the research scholars and they may help uh, for analyzing data and uh, there are statistical tools available uh, so use the appropriate uh, tools rather than uh, rather than using some of the students you know they use only percentage uh, in the master's project and all this is not fair so you can use the appropriate tool rather than person percentage analysis is not strong enough so you can use the automatic mean, they can use the correlation, they can use the regression type of uh, analysis which will be helpful. Okay. So again, the uh, construction of table, the, uh, the uniformity is required. So the APA providing uniformity, the students are to are required to follow APA 7 guidelines. So the tables is like there is no cross lines here. This is the format of the table as uh, provided by APS 7 and you can write the table notes, you can write the table heading and this is a format of uh, you know uh, the figures, figures you, you should have a figure number, figure title and you know figure not and you should have a check cross check all these things are clearly stated in the figure okay. So last one is reporting so uh, reporting in the sense you should have uh, you know uh, these things like uh, introduction, literature review, theoretical framework and you should have chapters based on the objectives. It, it's not fair if you frame the chapters like analysis and findings or something like that. So based on the objective, uh, based on the uh, uh, study research questions, you can divide the chapters objective one for chapter. It's not like objective one. The, the name may be different. Okay. So I will show you the uh, chapter uh, nine. Okay, you can, uh, so here, so this is the ch second chapter, so this is the ch third chapter, so this is the case study, uh, on climate wind perspective. So this is one objective. So she titled as case study on climate wind perspective. So this type of way you can, you know, uh, frame the chapters and last one, I mean, second last one, findings, implications and conclusion. And you should have bibliography and uh, appendix. And you should have bibliography and appendix. Uh, so here you can, uh, you know, uh, you can, uh, have references the entire references used okay so uh, this is a uh, work and i can show you some other work this is another work so this type of way the references uh, are to be uh, put across this very mm, general way the references are uh, stated and can find the appendix here, last part, the next year, and here the bibliography. You can find that. Okay. So, uh, so this is the uh, way in which you can make a project. And uh, thank you all. Uh,